there we go. Good morning, guys. Uh, good morning, Steve. I'm not sure um, about the uh, countdown, why that was, because I didn't have a countdown screen on. I just had the um, please stand by. Though that could have been on the uh, other computer when I, as, as I connect to uh, YouTube. So, but uh, Steve, Alex, good morning. Super Dave, good morning. I know this was an impromptu um, video. Is my mic on? That looks on. How's my levels, guys? Do I sound all right? So uh, what I'm doing today, in, and I'm completely messing around, I got a third camera uh, attached. Um, so I'm playing with that, just making sure that it looks okay. Um, I have... Uh, a visit with the um, guys at Panfish Nation on Thursday the 23rd. Uh, I'm going to be um, joining them on their podcast. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. So I did add a third camera. So when I'm looking at the screen, interacting with um, Lyle and Mark, um, it looks like I'm looking at them. So um, just messing around a little bit with some of the... Um, equipment. Uh, the other thing we have going on is uh, uh, I'm building a website uh, to you know be able to sell jigs online. I've had a, a lot of requests for that. Um, I do do mail order. If people want to order from me they can uh, go into the about section on my channel and and get my email address um, but I'm just working through how much can I put on the website itself and make it viable um, you know have enough on there um, <clears throat> to cover the monthly subscription and the maintenance and the things that I do to add and add and update things um, so this morning, I'm just preparing uh, different jigs that I'm going to be taking pictures of to add to that, and I just thought I would turn on the cameras. I haven't done a, a live thing in a while, and uh, just thought I'd turn everything on. So if I switch to the vise... And we'll turn my face on. So I'll primarily be using the two cameras that I normally do. Now the first thing I have to do is um, <clears throat> I'm adding stinger hooks to a couple of these just for the photos. And for that website to begin with I am uh, just going to concentrate on the uh, walleye jigs, the barumba, um, the flats, and just the basic ball. And um, then once once that's up and running, then I can go in anytime I want and I can add the ice jigs, the smaller micro stuff, the um, hackle jigs, um, crappie jigs, the herring streamers that I've been uh, messing with and I'm really looking forward to we've had some warm days so it feels like springtime's coming even though this morning we woke up and it was 18 degrees um, I, I really want to fool around with that walleye rig I mentioned in an older video about um, 
fishing a streamer here locally. I, I learned it as a kid. Um, locally, we call it a Susquehanna streamer. My dad used to talk about it um, is how he would fish the Shenango and Susquehanna rivers as a kid. And just, it was just a big, ugly um, bucktail attractor. Morning Fire Tiger. Um, and basically, they would wait the, um, put a split shot on the line about 12 inches up from the streamer, and then just jig the streamer sideways, cast it out from shore, and uh, jig it sideways. Um, and they'd catch bass and walleye and uh, pike here in the Shenango and Susquehanna rivers. So, I, I fished that way as a kid, but um, going down a rabbit hole, uh, looking at uh, Wolf River rigs or Wisconsin rigs, um, they go by a few different names, um, but it's that walleye streamer, they'll have two or three streamers on the line with a uh, pencil weight, and they're... Uh, slowly pulling them through the current. Um, there's also a couple guys online that I really like watching that fish from shore with the same type of rig. So just for something fun to try, uh, that was something that I want to do this spring, just to goof around um, and, uh, you know, just do something different. So I will be tying up more of those streamers once I, I'm, I'm playing with figuring out a happy medium, something that to me represents a jig, um, the, the type of profile and size and shape, but also um, following the example of those guys in Wisconsin and how their streamers are. I'm also trying to figure out, there, I'm just putting stingers on these right now. I'm also trying to figure out um, why they use the hooks they use. A lot of the guys use a really short shank hook where it, I, I suspect they're copying uh, the salt, salt water streamer guys. Um, using that type of hook um, but I'm not sure so I'm gonna I all the ones that I've done have been on a 3 or 4 X long streamer hook more of a traditional streamer hook um, but I also do a couple on those smaller hooks that smaller shank hooks that I, I have ordered and are coming um, just to see, you know, why choose one over the other. Um, I would think mostly if you're fishing for something that attacks the bait from the head, the shorter hook would be fine. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm, you know, and I'm going to play around with it and see what I can learn. Look through a lot of my books. Can't find anything written on it at all really um, but most of my books are trout fishing and um, tandem streamers and trolling streamers so I did find a, a Bates book um, I have a couple versions one from 1966 and then the same book just more more modern. It's got a different title, but it's basically a lot of the same information. Uh, and my version was published in sixty uh, in seventy early seventies, I think it was. Originally, the first printing on on that book was in the fifties, but uh, there is a chapter on waiting streamers. And they were making jigs. The where they were placing the weight 
on the uh, streamer hook. Uh, it was a long shank jig. So I want to read up a little bit more and um, try to gather the information on that. You know, just it changes. I've noticed my older copy it has the same information, but it's slightly different. Um, the newer version, he expanded on it. And uh, so I want to try to figure out, to try to decipher what the actual facts were or what, what uh, information had changed over time and why. And again, just trying doing that sleuth type work and reading the historical type information and trying to figure out what was what what's fact. But uh, an interesting thing with that is Vela. In his uh, one of his streamer books, mentions Bates, and they actually disagree on. Uh, who created the uh, Bucktail Streamer, um, which they both kind of credit to being fished here, uh, upstate New York, um, in the Rome area, Rome, New York area. So that's also another area that I want to go through and look to see whose information is more accurate um, or why the information had changed, why, why Bates information is different than uh, Vela's. So be, it, it's fun and interesting for me uh, to go through all that stuff. And I'm just looking real quick here at the screen. All right, let me see if I can. Perfect. So, <clears throat> like I said, right now, I'm just adding stingers to a few of these heads. And I'm going to be using these uh, just to take pictures to add to the, um, to the website. The uh, orange thread I'm using, you can use any color thread for this. It's just a size A. Uh, rod wrapping thread. It, uh, this happens to be good rod. Um, I use the orange only because um, I had ordered I had ordered uh, I don't know 12 two boxes so that would have been 24 spools <clears throat> of thread and then I had apparently doubled that order. Um, so I have an awful lot of orange size A thread that I don't really use. Um, you know, what I, I do use the orange thread on like a brown and orange bucktail. But for the most part, it doesn't get much use. So I like to use it adding the um, stinger hooks just to use it up. So... But red uh, would be a great color to use because it, it offers a little bit extra color. You know, that red flashing uh, from underneath the hair as you're working the jig. Or black or, you know, a color that's the same as the hair would be just fine. Um, I could also go in and add uh, a tinsel, just like a streamer body. And that would look okay too with a black thread with the uh, barber pole of the silver. So I'm going to do one more stinger and then I have a few heads here that I'm just going to put hair on.
typically with this thread that I'm adding the stinger with once I do a dozen or so I take the uh, my head cement my lacquer based head cement and I thin it down just a little extra and uh, put a light coat over the threads just to just to help uh, with the durability you could catch a bunch of fish on these um, just on the stinger they can thrash around and um, the lacquer is just mainly to kind of protect it from the teeth you know getting getting raked and nicked by the teeth um, not really it doesn't really help it anymore to keep it attached to the shank um, the line that is attaching the two hooks is just a 30 pound uh, Berkeley big game and I, I, I like the uh, monofilament if you're catching a lot of fish only because it doesn't distort as much as um, the surflon which is another good choice to use for this connector uh, but if it gets kinked real tight you know if there's a tight bend in it um, it's it's almost impossible to, to kind of stretch back out or bend um, correctly so I do prefer the um, the 30 pound mono so let's see I'm gonna do I'm gonna switch my thread here so I'm just going to my size A this is pack bay size A rod wrapping thread and these heads are right now the 5.8 Barumba and Do that color and that color and this color. Yeah, Steve, I'm looking forward to um, going through those books um, and really trying to determine um, First of all, where Bates got his information and, and why he would think that. And, he, of course, he's the author from an earlier time. Uh, and then uh, maybe trying to decide or, or find out what changed his mind. or, or First, where, where did he get the information? So the, the fellow that he, and I don't recall the names right now off the top of my head, but... The guy in Rome, New York, where he got that name from. And then where Vela got his name from is the person who invented, so to speak, or the first to use or, or tie the hair wing in Rome, New York. Um, but then also, how did it change? Because I, I recall somewhere reading write a, a book from Bates where his information changed as well so trying to figure out you know where they got their information from a lot of times I think and just like when you talk to people present day like if, if we traveled somewhere and we're fishing and went to the local bait shop you might talk to somebody who who says that you know t the local tire invented you know the black bucktail jig um, because they were the first to tie it in that area or they were the first to or the only one that that those fishermen had met in that area that tied it and they've never traveled anywhere else but in reality you know a black bucktail jig could have been invented down the road Steve, I'm definitely. I'll have to uh, dig out those names. Uh, the the first book that I noticed 
Bates talking about um, Rome and who he listed, the, the name that he listed as the inventor of the hair wing was, um, I think it's called Bucktails and Hair Wings, the Big Fish Flies. Um, my version of the book was published in the early 70s, um, though the first printing of that was in the 50s. And then the other book I have from Bates, I think it's just called Streamers or Bucktails. Oh, let me grab them real quick. I have them both right there. All right, so the first, let's switch over just briefly. So the first book, and like I said, this, my version was published nineteen seventy nine uh, it was first published in nineteen fifty second publishing in nineteen sixty six this copy is nineteen seventy nine Joseph Bates jr is the author streamers and bucktails the big fish flies um, this is a really cool book I've had this a long time um, since I was a kid and and like I mentioned before it's like sometimes I've had these for so long but I flip through them and I always learn something different. So what caught my eye in this one was the chapter on streamer jigs and other weighty suggestions. And of course you can't really see the illustration much on this, but it shows where Bates worked out with another uh, fisherman um, different head types, a doll head, a bullet head, a shot head. Um, they used um, sheet lead as well as um, split shot weights like that um, to try different things and we're turning those hair wing streamers into um, jigs, which was super cool. Um, the other book I mentioned, and this one's a little bit older, Streamer Fly Tying and Fishing, also by Bates. And this copy that I've had, also another, I've had this copy almost as long as the other book. My copy was printed in 1966, and the uh, first printing was 1950. So, just like um, I mentioned, I kind of first noticed it in a lot of the fly tying books. Um, let me switch, hold on. Bear with me. Just making sure which camera I'm looking at. Um, what I noticed in a lot of the fly tying books is uh, with Rube Cross. His books were published by different publishers, had different titles, maybe a little bit different um, extra pages or um, a little bit different size of the binding, so to uh, the, you know, the, the book itself. But it was the, the exact same information. I think it's it's kind of the same with Bates as well. Both of these books have very similar information. The chapters might be named differently, but as you read through it, a portion of one chapter is almost identical, and maybe he expands on something, a different thread in the older book, um, or goes the other direction as things get updated in the newer book. Um, so, uh, I guess what I'm getting at is sometimes it feels like you're getting ripped off um, when you're reading some of these books because you think that you're uh, buying a brand new book with all new information, and it's it's not. It's it's some of the same old stuff. Um, if you're lucky. The old stuff was um, updated and um, expanded on. 
Um, but interesting nonetheless. Let's go back here. Turn my face back on. So, uh, you know, when do I get time to do all this? I have no idea. Um, just like with starting the website, um, nothing like starting a project when you have, you know, three or four different pots on the fire. So. So in the vise, I uh, just this is a plain black bucktail jig. I'm going to finish this off just like normal. And I'm not adding head cement on any of these right now. Um, everything that I'm tying, what I will do is um, add the cement after. And the idea is for the um, technical difficulty. My microphone just dove off the table. To, uh, just to make sure that uh, my wireless mic didn't uh, run out of batteries, I connected it with the cable, and the cable just had some tension on it, so pulled itself over. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about... Uh, so the website and the pictures that I'm taking. So, of course, for each of the jig styles, you can get it plain. So we just tied a very plain um, bucktail, black bucktail. Um, there will be choices if you wanted to um, add a stinger hook to that bucktail. But the picture for the stinger hook will, I think, just be the, the plain head. And um, just to show how that's attached, eventually I'll probably have a, an actual finished, you know, a, a brown or black bucktail with the stinger, with the tinsel, anything that I can add. So, well, I wanted to tie a brown one, but I do not have brown hair on my table. So let's tie black and an olive so we'll tie an olive this is a one half barumba <coughs> oh, pardon me <clears throat> more than Alex so this is a half barumba Again with the red size A thread. And I have the solid olive. So right now I'm going to do the olive and fluorescent yellow we needed for the photos. Didn't notice what time we started. The timer on the YouTube says 45 minutes, but I know that it took me quite some time to uh, get turned on, only because I was messing with cameras. And I'm going to check the uh, that place card. You know, it, it, that said "Please stand by" and had the corny little music. Um, just to see if the loop is timed actually. Marzulu Caddis for the Mohawk River. You know, I've never fished the Mohawk River. Uh, 
this jig is just an olive and a fluorescent yellow. It's a plain yellow. Let's go with this one. We have a fair amount of uh, people watching that are longtime viewers. <clears throat> and in regard to the website, I do have the ability to add, I don't know if you want to call it a membership area or a subscriber area. Um, if I had something like that, what are the type of things would um, would you be interested in finding in that? Um, you know, I think there's old standbys that a lot of place, a lot of people have when they have their own website. Is you know private videos or um, you see the videos before they are uploaded uh, onto YouTube. Um, one thing that I actually am uh, another project that I'm thinking about um, <clears throat> since talking to uh, Lyle at Panfish Nation the setup that they use for their podcast I think would be a great a great um, way to do some live tying um, not like this where it's show and tell, but um, something similar as a, as a member of the Catskill Fly Tires Guild before COVID. Um, I admit that I haven't updated my membership since that, but <clears throat> now, that, now that we're kind of past the whole social distancing thing, um, I am looking forward to uh, this spring the rendezvous at the uh, Catskill Fly Time Museum. But um, what we used to do, uh, guild members, we'd get together uh, once a month and uh, we'd sit around a table and tie. Sometimes you're learning something, sometimes somebody's tying something new and fancy um, and kind of a show and tell thing. and. Uh, just teaching a pattern but a lot of times it was just us sitting around um, tying whatever we wanted and having a laugh uh, we would also tie for um, organizations like wounded warrior that type of thing where we would tie pretty much whatever we we wanted to that evening but everything that we tied during during our session we'd throw in the in the pile for the donation um, so offering something like that on the website I think would be really neat um, and something that I would really like to to maybe get into again um, maybe doing like a round table so let me know your thoughts on that or if you have any other ideas uh, for a special area on the website um, Caddisfly is always probably the first thing I use wherever I go, that's for sure. Um, crappie jigs, for sure, can do that. Always interested in doing more ties, um, trying out different things, and... Um, to be honest, I've wanted to put a camera or two over my fly tying bench and sit down and tying proper flies, you know, an actual Catskill style dry, um, maybe proper streamer, more than what I've done here. Um, and tie to fish videos. I'm, 
to be honest, I'm hoping to do that with, um, I'm going to try it with the springtime uh, trying that walleye rig because there's a couple flies that I really think are cool um, that I, I plan on. Let me finish this jig before I take it out of the vise. But I plan on um, taking the camera with me when I try the uh, streamer rig. And I'm going to try it my old-fashioned way. And I'm going to try it the new way that I, that I want to learn. And uh, actually get some video of me catching fish. So might hear a little bit of noise in the background. I think the rest of the house is starting to wake up. I think I heard the dogs come down the down the stairs. Hey Dave, how you doing? I missed when you signed on. Um So I I would I wouldn't mind doing videos that um I don't put on YouTube, maybe um only available to uh, members or subscribers that would be totally fine uh, other websites uh, things I've seen an idea would be a jig of the month um, that would maybe be some weird pay type subscription um, you know to cover postage jig swaps um, that's another thing <clears throat> I've, I've done with a bunch of different sites over the years um, tying forms that um, they're still up and running but they don't have the uh, membership like they used to um, but the jig swaps were always fun there we go. plain black bucktail one half barumba so this is a streamer that I I was just messing around with material. I wanted to see how, let me turn my face off so you get a good view of this. Um, I wanted to see, I was just playing with the material. So I posted pictures of a few streamers recently using the uh, craft fur. And uh, I might, oh, there it is. So on this streamer, we have a gold uh, tinsel yarn that I've used before uh, for the body. This underwing, which I tied in as a tail, and then two center wings, I guess you would call it, and then... Um, the last one, the last wing being right underneath this dun color. That is Hairline Ice Fur Polar Bear in the cream. Which uh, is a really neat material. I actually have uh, some polar bear that I've picked up at a couple fly shops up in Canada. And it's pretty darn similar, um, I have to admit. Uh, and then this top wing is the hairline extra select craft fur, and that's in the medium done. But I thought this streamer uh, was really interesting, and I like the way the um, body remains fairly sparse. Um, but, but also has a little bit of bulk to it. So uh, I, I suspect that this will thin down an awful lot once it gets wet, just the nature of the um, craft fur. This hairline uh, extra select craft fur is really neat to me. It was a lot like tying with um, marabou, if I had really long marabou fibers. Uh, so I'm really excited about this streamer in particular um, and the other one that I did with the uh, craft fur and this is just a color uh, combination that is one of my go-to colors for a jig um, I do this 
uh, blue done with the um, uh, chartreuse and then the pearl uh, angel hair crystal flash whichever material you have on hand um, but again with this craft fur so I know this will thin down real tight uh, as it goes through the current but when it stops and uh, <clears throat> is moved around by the current or, or, or jigging the rod just slightly, that hair is going to um, pulsate and really, I think, give some good action. So, I like I mentioned, I do this same streamer with a brown head, um, usually a ball head, uh, and it's it's a go-to uh, color for, for me in the Susquehanna River here locally. Um, I do agree... Um, adding uh, absolutely uh, where people can share uh, pictures of their patterns um, uh, I could also go into greater detail of the patterns um, that we're using you know actual recipes so to speak um, Alex I think that's a fantastic idea um, and I agree there's there's a ton of talented tires um, a lot of people that don't go on YouTube, a lot of people that aren't involved in groups, um, a lot of people that don't talk about it. You know, it's just a, just somebody that does it as their free time, as a hobby. Um, so, so yeah, those type of things, I think, um, absolutely. Yeah, Alex, I'm really looking forward to using the streamer. Um, I'm, I'll am i probably tie up a couple jigs as well. Um, again, this summer, wanting to get out in the kayak um, with some actual video. Um, the um, Alex, with the uh, fox hair... I've used that in the past. I don't know if I, I don't think it's on any videos. Um, I did, I actually going through my um, file cabinet in the back right behind me here where I save jigs and things that I've tied. I have a streamer that I used the Fox Bucktail um, that I thought was really good, but I, I had to make a, a really wide streamer. Um, Um, it was a long streamer. It's probably five or six inches long, and I thought the fox hair worked good for that. It was sparse, so it wasn't a big clump, um, because I thought it was slightly stiff. Um, if and then I tied it on to a jig. I think it was a half barumba, and to me it seemed a little stiff. Where I had to, I I liked the fact that the fibers were. Um, natural where the ends weren't square they they kind of tapered at the ends um, but it just seems stiff if I used what I thought would be 50-50 uh, clump you know to, um, adding it with bucktail um, but yeah the fox hair I thought was kind of neat if on the longer on the longer streamers that was that was my impression of it um, the colors absolutely um, I really like the fox stuff so all right, let's get back to what are we doing next? I got a quarter. Now I haven't shown, I haven't tied these all that much. Um, they don't get a lot of requests. I do sell a fair amount of them, but um, I don't get a lot of requests for these. It's mostly guys that know and they're using them in a specific location or a specific depth. So it's that uh, Barumba head in a quarter size. And this jig, I, I have uh, a couple molds. This mold is much newer and as you can see has a nice sharp square nose and this is the, uh, 
an example from the oldest mold I have of the uh, Barumba head. And it's slightly more pointed at the end. Um, I like them both. I, I, I keep them mixed. Um, I don't know if people uh, notice it much. I haven't had any complaints over the years, but um, it's mostly just from that that second head. That mold is so old, um, and is it just wears out. It's it's probably one of the first molds that we had made. Probably older than me. Um, you know, before I was born, when, when my father first started. Um, getting into um, designing uh, the jigs and um, doing the custom molds. Now there are jigs that are very, very similar to the Barumba head. You know, any of the walleye style jigs are very similar. Profile might be slightly different, but it's, it's your typical walleye. Uh, type jig. Oh, that's a good point too, Alex. Um, how the water stains natural materials. And, you know... <laughs> Um, when I posted uh, the recent uh, that blue dun and chartreuse streamer um, I, I made a comment about how I used synthetic material I try not to um, or the stuff I do use it's been around a long long time um, and, and maybe that's a fault of mine not being more open to uh, some of the new stuff. Um, Scotty B, welcome. Um, yes, uh, I am. I'm trying to copy the Wolf and Fox River, those type of um, rigs um, that they use for white bass and walleye. Um, if you're new to the conversation, it's a it's a you know, we we fished for streamers since I was a kid here in the Susquehanna. And what we would do is you just had a single streamer on your line. It was a big, ugly bucktail. And just a split shot about 12 inches connected to the line. And we would fish it exactly the way the guys are fishing uh, in Wisconsin. So when I got down, you know, going down a YouTube rabbit hole... And, and watch the guys using the, the rigs on the uh, Fox and Wolf River, um, I'm thinking, God, I could do that from shore here. Um, and mostly what I was thinking is that our local spillway, where you lose a jig every two or three casts uh, because of the rocks. Um, so that's, that's why I started doing it, or, or started thinking about it. So I'm really looking forward to this spring and goofing around with that. Um, and yeah, 50 plus years, I'd, I'd believe it. Um, that Susquehanna streamer, um, was my father used to fish in the Shenango and the Susquehanna rivers using that streamer that I explained, um, going back into the, this is, you know, forties, late thirties, early forties. Um, so yeah. And, and and I I like fooling around with some of the old forgotten techniques. Um, I'm just trying to up the game just a little bit, copying these guys that are using it um, in your neck of the woods. So awesome. So we're kind of, hopefully it's not too distracting how I got to look in different directions. 
and even though I have a camera right above the um, computer, as I'm tying, it's easier to look at this camera here for the picture in picture. So, Scotty, using that um, that walleye rig. Do you tie the flies directly to the line? So you have the fly at the end and the couple, one or two, up the line? Or are you adding a, a, a tag so the flies that are farther up the line have six or seven inches of, of their own line coming off of that? Um, I've seen both. I would think that um, having the flies on a on on the main line itself, tied directly to the main line, would be no tangles. Um, but how do, how do you how do you rig that? How do you tie that up? And then the description that I've seen of that connecting those flies to the main line is they're using just a straight. Just a regular pa Palomar knot. Um, I don't know if there's any other special knots. It's not like you can... Um, there's no books on this, right? You don't really find any of this information in books. So I'm going to tie just a few more of these. I'll do a couple with um, I got to do a black with the red tinsel. And I'll do that next. And then I got to clear this area because this is where I do most of my photography only because I got the three lights all set up. And this one will be the olive bucktail with the cream, if I have a tail here. So the olive, and this is uh, off-white. It's a cream color. It kind of reminds me of root beer fizz when you pour a glass of root beer. Lots of noise upstairs. I think the dogs are getting peanut butter. Little treat. So our ice fishing season this year was hot and cold and hot and cold. It's cold again right now. And uh, maybe we'll get ice again, but right now most of the, unless you're fishing on the really small lakes, most of the lakes are are bust. I know Oneida Lake is pretty much done. They might have a little bit of ice, but you're fishing really close to shore in uh, some of the smaller bays. Skipjack is cut bait, yeah. And are you Alex, are you in Tennessee? Is that right? I don't know the name of the dam. The last time we were down in Tennessee, visiting my brother-in-law and his family, they took us on the Tennessee River and we fished um, 
right below a giant dam. Um, and we were pulling out the biggest catfish I'd ever caught in my life. Um, and there was another fish, and I don't remember what they were called. Um, they're big red fish. So this jig, we're doing the black with the um, flashaboo, red flashaboo. Now this is a solid black. And I tie the flashaboo on a little bit different than if I was using crystal flash or angel hair where after we put on this first pinch and we give it a twist I take five to eight strands don't have to spend a lot of time counting these out but um, roughly five to eight and I put the flash right down the center on top of the hook shine. And I don't have to trim this um, just because I was a little careful on where I cut it. So it stops right before the tips of the uh, tail itself. But the flashaboo is right down the center. I like that. Um, that's how that's how I first learned how to tie it. Um, but for the flashaboo, I think uh, that works well because the flashaboo itself is thicker than if we were using crystal flash or angel hair. And then the way I would tie the crystal flash on is I would first tie on both pinches of hair. And before we finish the collar, I put a length of, you know, two, uh, four strands of crystal flash down one lateral line and, and then down the other side. So if I don't have these in my inventory already where I can just open a package and take a picture of those, that's kind of why I'm, I'm tying these here today. Northern Alabama. Okay, so nowhere, <laughs> nowhere near Tennessee where I was fishing. And that was a few years ago. I, my niece, his daughter at the time, she was... I don't know. She, I think she was like 8th or ninth grade. And we just saw... Her recently at my daughter's wedding and at the uh, end of October and kids grow up you know she's about the same age as um, our youngest so yeah they're they're adults now driving and got jobs and going to college and starting to feel old So my brother-in-law is in Chattanooga, or just outside of Chattanooga. Um, what's the name of it? It's got a weird name. Escapes me. He it, He's close to Chattanooga. He's not far from Chattanooga. Um, and we were right on the Tennessee River. I remember having to go through a lock which was a little scary being in a John boat uh, when you had a, a great big uh, flat deck boat filled with uh, uh, you know the cargo containers um, and as the lock filled up and that boat shifts a little bit <laughs> if you really want to feel small that's a good way to do that just go through a lock with a great big uh, giant ship um, but we get through the lock and then the dam was the, uh, the dam and the power station, whatever they had right there was, was, uh, right, right there. And, uh, what the guys would do is 
what the guys would do is pull their boat right up to the uh, wall along the dam and um, he had his anchor rope and he had a uh, like a metal bar that he would slide between the crack between the two panels of concrete put it in the crack and kind of turn it slightly so it would wedge in there so the boat would stay um, right along the wall there we didn't move too much um, we did notice when the we did have to be careful when the water level would drop you know if it drops too much and you don't adjust your anchor point um, soon you're hanging off the <laughs> you're hanging off the wall we saw a guy do that that was that was a little scary but he luckily um, his boat wasn't completely hanging um, it, it was still slightly buoyant so he was able to to get that unwedged um, but yeah that would have been bad if the water level dropped another inch or two he, his boat would would have been just stuck to the wall until the water came up so. All right, so we did the um, red tinsel. What else do I got to do? I don't have, I do have the pearl. So we will do, that black barumba. I, and I apologize a little bit. Some of these jigs are slightly boring. I'm really not doing anything terribly fancy. Um, like I said, I'm just um, tying what I need to um, take the photos for the website. Um, and these are just, you know, a few that I, I don't have pre-tied. So the other thing I will have to do with this website is, you know, I have to manage the inventory on it. So I will have my boxes of complete dozens that I take to the bait shops. I'm going to have to have a separate box of the open dozens. So if I die a dozen, uh, tie a dozen at a time, it'll be my uh, website inventory. So the other thing with the website is I'm trying to consider right now the best way to go about doing it is um, either selling the jigs individually or selling them in groups of three or, or uh, you know you buy you buy a black bucktail you get three so pricing them that way um, I kinda have my feeling you know I, I've gone to websites and bought jigs um, You might be right, Alex. Um, we might have been around Fort La Lauden, um, but I will. I'll have to. I'll have to give him a call and find out exactly where we were. It was so many years ago. Um, that'll be a picture I'll add to the website. Me holding the catfish bigger than my kids. Um, So, as a customer, I've gone on websites, and I do like the idea of, oh, I just want one of those and one of these. Um, but if you get a little bit of discount uh, per jig, if I could save a few cents per jig, and they only come in groups of three, so if I buy a black jig, I get three black jigs, but instead of... 250 a piece they're two bucks a piece um, I don't feel so bad buying them that way so um, I'm just trying to decide which would be the best I could add both but then it makes your drop down box when you're buying jigs um, almost unmanageable um, to start with I'm only doing about five colors so if you go into the 5.8 Barumba, 
you click the black head and you get five different choices colors to choose from well those five different colors to choose from also have uh, a stinger version a flash version a stinger and flash version um, so if I also double that by adding buying one at a time or buying buying them in groups of three that doubles everything so um, unless I'm missing something on this website on how to go about um, adding those types of drop-down boxes I don't want to make it so unmanageable that a customer looking at it is just there's too many choices I'm I'm just gonna buy my one thing and go so we'll see um, I still have another 14 days to goof around with this um, I'm doing these jigs today just to see how the photos look and um, how they get plugged in so what I'm adding here is four strands of the pearl crystal flash and it's identical to the crystal hair CH19 um, I don't know if you can still find crystal flash um, this is very 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 old material that I've had for years um, and crystal hair seems to be what you see mostly on websites but it's it's identical it's the exact same material so it's possible just the name kind of evolved I've also seen it called angel hair but exact same thing and I'm just tying it in right down the lateral line of the jig and then I'm trimming it just before the so it's just short the length of the tail and that's the other thing too um, there are styles that people prefer based on their location uh, some areas I've and you see it online you see you see different tires they'll tie the uh, tinsel much longer than the tail and that's what they would prefer I don't have an easy way to add custom things like that I would love it if I could just put drop down box custom flash custom stinger custom and and as you click each thing it increases the price per special thing um, and then an area for comments so if somebody wanted that red flashaboo to stick out past the tips of the tail um, some people like that um, I was always taught not to tie it that way <clears throat> um, and I'm convinced um, myself just from walleye fishing is that we um, don't want the hairs to extend um, to limit the amount of short strikes you get from the walleye because those couple extra long hairs or the um, tinsel that's sticking out too far too far my father always explained it to me tickles the nose of the walleye and um, you get those short strikes is that always true I don't know but that you know the old fishermen that smell like bait I kind of believe them so crystal flash okay yep so this is the stuff I'm using Alex crystal flash with a K I'm sure I could go get some crystal hair with a C I can get the angel hair I could get the um, what else do, do they call it so yeah it's a popular material been around forever The other place I fished um, when I was down in Tennessee was the, um, and that it might be part of the Tennessee River as well. It 
it's the river that goes right through the uh, Cherokee National Park and uh, did some fly fishing down there and um, beautiful river uh, I was in a section that looked similar to what we have here in uh, New York State and um, it just looked like a nice big open pool um, and it looked fairly shallow maybe maybe um, up to my knees or so you know because you could see the um, the ripples in the river as it would go over the shallow parts hitting the rocks and whatnot so as I'm as I'm wading out and I start looking and I see these giant pools that were carved out of the stone so what looked like knee height water um, you could very easily step into uh, a car sized hole that was um, over six feet deep like it was it was surprising to me um, because here in New York State you're walking through the river and you get you might have boulders you know, you know big rocks bowling ball sized rocks that you're stepping over but it's fairly consistent um, the 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 level um, from the surface to the bottom of the river doesn't change all that much maybe a few inches occasionally you'll see a hole but uh, you're not going to dunk your head. You might, you might, you might get uh, water up to your waist, but you're not going under. Um, but yeah, that um, that river was, um, and I I do believe it is the Tennessee River there also. Um, it, it that was a learning experience. Um, you know, I thought I was I thought I was Joe Fly Fisherman and uh, knew everything. Well, I knew everything about the river I fish at. <laughs> just not just not Tennessee so I think that's going to do it for us um, this morning um, I think I've been tying at least an hour um, I got to clear my space and start taking some photos as I get closer to the uh, end of the two weeks and finishing up this um, website where I'll have things for sale and I'll put some videos up that um, aren't on uh, the YouTube just for just for people to visit the website you know that's not as a subscriber or anything like that um, but a reason even if you don't want to buy anything to come visit the website um, but I'm you know a couple weeks I'll get that finished up and I'll uh, I'll put some more information out on YouTube or Instagram just to let people know that it's up and running. Um, if you have the time, please join me Thursday, uh, the 23rd. Uh, it will be 7 p.m. Central Time, so 8 p.m. Eastern, um, where I'm going to be on the uh, podcast with uh, the guys from Panfish Nation. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, talking to Lyle. I think Mark will be there as well. Um, not 100% sure. I know Lyle uh, for sure. Um, but I was pretty excited. Um, and um, really was honored, I guess, um, when uh, Lyle contacted me and just, just said, hey, would you like to be on the podcast? And we ended up chatting on the phone um, doing a little FaceTime actually on the computer for about an hour or so and just um, worked through some of the computer stuff to make sure that um, the video that you get from me is is, is going to be as um, good as possible. Um, I didn't want to do it just on my phone and just, you know have it propped up. Um, I wanted the angle to be good and um, we found out that I'm going to be able to um, at least have the camera for the um, vice and then the camera that I'm going to talk into probably this camera over here which is um, lined up with the computer screen so it looks like I'm talking um, I'm looking at the person while I'm talking to them uh, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna have that ability so um, not exactly sure what we're going to talk about you know he's going to ask me about jig tying and probably a little bit of history and 
how I got started. I'm sure that'll be part of the conversation. Uh, it won't be 100% panfish stuff, I'm sure. So, but I'm looking forward to it, and I hope everybody joins me Thursday, the 23rd, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Um, and I'm sure uh, you could go uh, to their website, Panfish Nation, and subscribe so you get uh, uh, the notification for that. So, but I think that'll do it. I. Uh, Grateful for everybody who uh, stopped in today. A lot of good conversation, not just with me, but between uh, the viewers as well, which uh, I love that. Um, eventually, I'm going to have to get a helper, somebody who can manage the computer um, and clue me in on different things so I, I'm not just looking at the vice or just reading the comments and responding. So. Uh, trying to make things a little bit smoother but um, I'm glad everybody enjoys what we're doing here and like I said that'll do it for us until next time guys keep tying and tight lines can't believe I didn't record